Hi everybody! So I want to do something that I honestly didn't think that I was going to do. And that is come to the defense of Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 4. Oh, sh this episode, The Last of the Starks, has an IMDb rating of 6.7. So first, I want to go through the list of complaints and criticism about the episode which I agree with. <laughs> but then I'm gonna turn the tables and come to the defense of this episode in a kind of a weird way, maybe, so stick around. Maybe the main complaint was about John not petting Ghost, not acknowledging him too much. Second most common complaint was about Rhaegal getting killed just like that, and Daenerys not, not seeing the Iron Fleet even though she was up above and Euron and, uh, and his fleet being able to shoot at her from such a long distance as if their bolts were like uh, with the laser uh, targets that she didn't go around and burn all, the, all their boats that King's Landing from the outside seemed weird that all the bodies that we saw outside of Winterfell didn't seem like the million or so that they should have been there and why did they burn all the bodies just outside Winterfell? Wouldn't the smoke like bother them for like days? And why did uh, Jon Snow give this speech with his back to the public? That uh, Jaime leaving Brienne was uh, lame Then there was the Starbucks gate which honestly is the one criticism that I don't care about at all. Some say that how come they had so much uh, lumber, timber to burn all the bodies during winter? Hmm. Why Daenerys wasn't prepared for the Iron Fleet even though she knew they were coming for her? How come Tyrion spoke so softly and Cersei could hear him all the way up there? Why didn't they send Arya to kill Cersei if uh, she's so good at sneaking around everything and everybody and kill evil dudes? I agree with all of these criticisms, yet I disagree with the bottom line criticism of this specific episode. Episode, as if this episode is the problem of Game of Thrones, as if this is the episode where everybody just loses their shit and like, what's going wrong with our, with our beloved show? As if everything made sense up to now. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's be real. Let's keep it 100, okay? This is not the worst <laughs> episode of the show. It's actually the best episode of the season and for me it was the best since season 7 episode 4 when Daenerys burned everybody. Okay, speaking of last season, how logical was the was the red shirt ranging party beyond the wall? That was so much more ludicrous and stupid than anything we've seen in episode 4. They're going beyond the wall, just like six people in the hopes of just getting one zombie, taking him back. And the zombie's just waiting there to attack them and being able to, to, to get the chains <laughs> stuck to Viserion to bring him up from the water. And, and Gendry being able to run so fast. For... Oh, speaking, about, uh, speaking of going fast from place to place. So now people say it's illogical that Daenerys couldn't see the fleet. Ah, was it logical when Varys teleported to Dorne and then back again to Essos? When Theon was able to go to get from place to place in one single episode? When Littlefinger did, went all the way from the Vale to the Wall in one episode? When Arya and the Hound way back in season 4 made the way to the Vale so quickly and then back? To the Riverlands? So now you're complaining? Now this is the most ludicrous that it's been? Come on, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. What undermined the story a lot more than Daenerys not seeing a fleet is just making all the distances not important anymore, not relevant anymore. Now you're complaining? But the episode The Long Night has a 8.3 rating on IMDb when it was <laughs> the whole battle tactics 
was just beyond the pale, beyond the pale. Just le let's send all our, uh, uh, our horse riders just like that and let's write off all our other non-brown horse riders from the veil because now they, because they didn't appear in the, in the episode. And let's defend our city outside the walls. Let's just, let's just put like a, like a narrow trench and wait for the last moment to put it on fire instead of just burning everything. Oh, and Arya, she just snuck around in there and got to kill the Night King, even though he wasn't on her list and she and, and, and her whole purpose was something else. No, 8.3 rating, right? Come on. And the dialogues in this episode, episode four, were like 10, 20, 100 times better than anything in episode one and episode two, which were frankly, for me, embarrassing. And the finale of last season, when they trust Cersei after they show her the corpse, that was totally anticlimactic. But it got 9.5 rating on IMDb. What? And the Beyond the Wall episode got 9.2. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go a little bit further to the past. Ooh, season six. Season six. John comes back to life with no explanation. Nobody knows why, nobody knows how, nobody cares, nobody asks him. Oh, that made sense, really. Oh. One of my favorite episodes of, uh, of season six, The Winds of Winter, the, the last episode, right? When Cersei blows up the, uh, the sept, her entire plan was premised on, what's his name, Lancel, not being strong enough to extinguish the fire that, you, the, that would have blown everything away. Just like lure him into her plan, give him an opportunity to foil her plan, but stab him only in the leg so much so, so, so he can only drag himself there to be so quickly. Oh, that made sense. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Did we talk about Arya getting stabbed in the belly repeatedly with a knife rolling over to a river and then magic? all over uh, everything from a from a fucking roof oh that made sense right 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 yeah uh, yeah and and just like the entire house of black and white plot this is just like one guy one girl this is the entire this, the, the, this is the faceless man ah uh, yeah 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 i like that a lot I like that a lot did we talk about dorn did we should we should we talk about dorn how it was so ludicrous that they had to just like, <laughs> screw it, let's just throw a grenade on that and just forget it ever happened. Forget it ever happened. <sighs> oh, and what about all the, <laughs> all the deus ex machina with Drogon coming in to save the day every time. People like that. Oh, by the way, the Dorn episode, 8.1 rating. Mm. So let me tell you what, what I think. I think the problem wasn't episode four, no. If you look at it without context, without the rest of the season, it's a good episode. Considering the low bar that the D&D douches set for the past three seasons, since season five, if you ask me. They've had highlights, but they've had a lot of lows. And when you compare this episode to the others, I think it's, I think it's pretty okay, it's pretty good. I, I can't think of any of the complaints, the correct complaints and criticisms about episode four being any near as egregious as the list that I've just now mentioned in other episodes. Ah, also, ghosts, people care so much about ghosts. I didn't get so many complaints about ghosts just getting written off from the show without any explanation and then written back to the show without an explanation. But now people are mad that John just didn't go and pet uh, ghosts for budgetary reasons or whatever because they didn't want to fly over the animal. I think that the problem was episode three. Once Arya did the unthinkable and just flew over and stabbed the Night King and he just shattered into pieces. Our illusion of the high standard of quality for the show shattered to pieces with it. Once the rosy colored glasses weren't there anymore, 
wants something stupid and that doesn't make any sense happened at a crucial crossroads, not in Dorn or whatever, in Bravos, Arya, healing from the wounds. Come on, we could ignore that. Once it happened with the Night King and the illusion was shattered, now, now we can objectively watch the show and now all the problems that were already there, now they're just like glaring and we can't ignore them anymore. I don't think this episode was not even close to be the worst episode of the entire show, which is what the IMDb score says. Even, <laughs> not even close, not even close. So yeah, it was rushed. Uh-huh, it has been so for a long time. Except episodes one and two where nothing happened. <laughs> And episode three, which was basically all about the last 90 seconds of the episode. Come on. Again, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. The quality of this show has not been consistent since season five. We have been content, this includes me, to ignore most of those in order to keep enjoying the story. We want to keep enjoying the story. Once... A major plot line. The whole magic thing with the White Walkers just got blown into pieces in the most unsatisfactory way. Now we can't ignore all, the fa all these faults anymore in the script. We can't ignore all the character arcs that are un uneven. Because Daenerys, they're hinting, they have been hinting that she's going mad for quite a while. But then no, but then she's fine. And then again, and then no, she's fine. And then again, no. So now when she finally uh, is about to go over the edge, now people are just like, Phew. no, how come, how come this is happening? Because this has been her arc all along. They just did a very bad job at making it look plausible and reasonable. What I think is different is not episode four. It's our eyes that are different. After we saw the conclusion of episode three, even though it got such a high rating on IMDb and most of the casual fans liked it, but then they were bombarded by people like us who said, no, 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 you didn't like it. This was horrible. This was horrible. Now when they're coming in to see the final three episodes, they're like, huh, was this always, did they always have these uh, plot problems? Huh? Yeah. How come this bolt hit her from so far? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and the Starbucks cup. Yeah. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Come on, everybody. Come on. I've been saying this since episode one. We have to accept the show for what it is. They are not very good. They're not very smart, I think. They're very, very lazy. They are full of hubris. This is it. The channel's hi highest viewed videos for three seasons has been the video that is saying basically the show is deteriorating. Okay, it was true season six, season seven, and now season eight. Mm -hmm. So the evidence was here for all that time. Okay, I think we have only two episodes left. I'm going to post tomorrow the episode 5 predictions video. Okay, let's try and put all the correct and valid criticism aside. Just watch the show for what it is. Okay, this is the story that we have been following for 8 seasons. We want to know how it ends up. We want to know who wins. We want to know who loses. Let's just enjoy the ride as much as we can. Let's take a breather. I'm sure the last two episodes won't be any better than episode four. Probably the same, okay? We followed up to now. Let's give the final push. Enjoy it for what it is. Okay, everybody? So thank you, everybody, for watching. You can tell me in the comments how much you disagree with what I just said. And I want to thank the patrons for supporting the show. And if you have very cool predictions for episode six... You can become a patron, post your predictions on Patreon, and I react to the final predictions for the final episode next week. The predictions for this episode, episode 5, I will post 
tomorrow. See you, see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Goth Academy is sponsored by our patrons.